bless you. I see Koin Juguna. I can't see the rest of you, but I welcome you and I appreciate you for joining me. We're going to wait a couple more minutes and we shall start together in the name of Jesus and God will bless us together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise your name. Give you glory, Lord. I bless your name. I bless your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. If you can kindly do me a favor and share the link on your groups, it actually is more effective when you put it on your groups so others can be able to join us. Share it on your Facebook wall. Let me know where you're watching from. Say hello. Just say, hey, my name is so and so watching from this city or this country. Just say hello. Share the link on your wall. Let your friends join us. 
let them be blessed with us and God will bless you as we wait for some more a couple more minutes you shall be here with us tonight as we worship your name as we glorify your name i pray that your people shall be blessed oh god i pray that we shall be refreshed in your presence oh god i pray that your presence shall fill us with your love and god we shall have strength for the journey ahead that oh god we shall be strong we shall be encouraged oh god i pray that lord you bless us tonight and that your name will be glorified oh god in the name of jesus i worship you lord i praise you I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor, Lord. Reba Boshata. Father, Father, praise you. I glorify your name. I pray tonight, Father God, you bless us tonight. I thank you. Uh, those for you who have joined me tonight, I want to thank you for being with me, being on time, and thank you for being on board. I don't know who's there, but I want to thank you for joining me. Let me see if I can see any names. It's hard. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to see them. But um, tonight, I'm going to um, do a couple of very old songs. I'm going to start by then my two second and third song that I wrote 10 years ago. These are old songs that are old worship songs that I wrote from scratch. I, I hear my songs in the spirit as I'm resting, as I'm writing. So I had these words and I wrote this down. The second song talks about the prodigal son. It's a story of the prodigal son, who you guys know the story if you read about him. 
he asked, the father was very wealthy, had two sons, and he said, Father, give me my inheritance. Give me my share of my inheritance. I want to go and be on my own. I'm a big boy now. I can, I can make it on my own. Just give me all my wealth. And the father tried to stop him, but he insisted on, give me all my, give me my portion of my inheritance. So the father just couldn't fight. He gave him his portion, and the rest is history. He went out there. He squandered all his wealth, all his, way, all his money and wealth, and he ended up being so poor, so broke, he ended up eating with the, with the pigs. So this is my third song that I ever wrote 10 years ago. It's called Fill My Cup Again. I'm going to do that song tonight. It's kind of like a classic for me, Kill, uh, uh, Fill My Cup Again. Uh, and it features one of, our old, one of my old friends called God's Replica. He's a rapper. Um, I, don't, I don't know where he is this day, but whatever you are, Mr. Replica, may God bless you, Obed Kisaru. And then I also am going to do another old song. That's my second song I wrote 10 years ago. Um, it's called Waiting on You. It, 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 it kind of has a little reggae flow. And it's a song that I wrote at a time when I was in prayer. And I was telling God, God, unless you come through for me, I cannot make it on my own. I said, God, I'm sitting in this place. I'm waiting on you. That's 10 years ago when I was learning how to write songs. They're very simple. You will tell the difference between those songs and the new album because I was learning how to write songs. I didn't know what to do. But God gave me the enabling to do it. So you be blessed as you listen. And I hope you'll enjoy these songs. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh. 
That is a song I was crying to God and telling God, let my cup overflow with your presence. I'm waiting on God. Jesus, I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. God bless you. 
Thank you, Lord. You want your praise. Yes. Today is 
this I'm walking in his victory. Lord has given me, given me his power. Man, is this the day of the Lord? To walk in his power, set the captives free. Man, is this the day of Jubilee? Victory today. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of the Victory is yours. Victory is mine. Today is mine. I'm walking in His victory. The Lord has given me, given me His power. Today is the day of the Lord. To walk in His power, set the captives free. From prison, he gave me victory from disease, he gave me victory from depression, he gave me victory from divorce. All the things that the Lord has done for me, I sing about these things because God has been good to me. I have seen his victory, I've seen his restoration, I've seen his deliverance. My God is a good God, hallelujah! Come on, praise him with me.
you. I thank you, Daddy, my brother, my sister's life, no man can do. We thank you because you are God like no other. There is no one like you, Jesus, oh Lord. The things you've done for us, no man can do. You've saved us, you've healed us, delivered us, Father God. Saved us from Corona, kept us healthy, Lord. There is no man like you, Jesus. No one compares to you. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I worship you, I praise you, Lord, in this house, oh God. Let your name be glorified, oh God. Let your name be lifted up, oh God. There is no one like you, Lord. I love it, my whole heart. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your answer. Yes, Jesus. You want your praise, Jesus. You want your my praise, Lord.
the cities of my love and worship for your wonderful, oh God, and that is not like you, oh God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a good thing to worship the Lord when you know that God has been so good to you. He has rescued you from so much trouble. So you just praise God. You worship Lord, we give you praise. We've come to magnify your name. For there's no one like you, Father God. We lift up your name and glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for you. You are such a good God. You are worthy of praise, oh God. You are worthy of honor, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. 
worthy of praise. Our God is worthy of all the honor. Our God is worthy of all the glory. Our God is worthy to be praised because there is no one like our God. So we praise Him because of who He is. We lay our crowns and we worship Him. And we say, You are God. You are mighty God. You are worthy God. at a moment of worship. I pray and I hope that God has touched you tonight as we've been worshiping together. I hope and pray you've received from the Lord refreshing from God as you worship God. There is nothing as beautiful as worshiping the Lord. In the freedom, in the presence of God, there is freedom to worship, freedom to praise Him. And so tonight the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 4, Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 4, it says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall see, shall come to thy light. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Let us thy lift up thine eyes about round about you. And see all them that gather together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters shall come and be nursed by your side. Verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Tonight as we worship the Lord. I want to remind us and encourage us to arise because the world is full of trouble. The world is full of issues and sickness and problems. The world is full of chaos and they're looking for a place to run. It's full of darkness. The Bible says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory shall come upon thee. The reason we worship God is that we may be full of his presence. We may be full of his light. That way when you go to your workplace, you go to the marketplace, when you go to your places of influence, the light of God that is in you, that resides in you, may be able to eliminate the sides around you. And everybody around you shall come to the presence of the light. And then they come and ask you why you're happy, why you're smiling, why you still have money in the bank, why you still have a smile, why you still have a hope and a step, why you're not back at home crying and depressed. You will tell them because the light of God has come upon me. I arose in the presence of God and I worship him in the midst of trouble. I worship him in the midst of tribulation and he sees my cry. He sees my tears and he fills me with his power. Fills me with his presence. I have the power of God because I have risen up in the midst of tribulation. I have called upon his name. Hallelujah. So I ask you to rise up tonight because when you rise up and, and, and worship the Lord, Yet the Lord comes and touches you and changes your surrounding. 
and he makes you a beacon on the hill. He makes you the light on the mountain. He makes you the, the hope of the people you are around. He makes people at work see you as a different person. And they wonder, where have you been? What have you eaten? What have you touched? And you tell them, I have touched the hem of his garment. When you touch the hem of Jesus' garment, your life is changed. Your life is transformed. You are never the same again. I know I've been touched. I know I've been changed. I know five months ago, I touched the hem of the garment of Christ. I know five months ago, I touched Christ through my worship. And my life has been changed. My life has been renewed. And I can sing and I can worship him knowing that my light has come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I give you praise because your light comes to change us. The Lord cannot give you light unless you are responsible, unless he knows that you can shine that light. The scripture that says, what is the point of getting a light and hiding it under your bed? What is the point of getting the light of Christ that is in you, that resides in you, and hiding that lamp under the bed? What's the point of covering that light? You will help nobody. You will save nobody. You will heal nobody. You will set nobody free. You will influence nobody if your light is hidden under the bush. But if you lift that light and say, Oh Lord, I have risen up in thy power and thy anointing. Lift up that light and let the people see you. There's people all around you that are looking for hope, looking for encouragement, looking for something to run to, looking for something to tell them, we shall be all right. They're looking for a hug, but they cannot get a hug because of Corona. So you can give them a hug in the Holy Ghost by saying, by God is able, by letting your light shine. When they see you, when they see you smiling at work, when they see you smiling at the supermarket, your joy of the Lord that resides in you shall draw them to whoever you have, shall draw them to the God you serve. You may not get a chance to preach to them, you may not get a chance to witness to them, but they shall see you and the Spirit of God that rises in you shall witness to them that there is hope. They shall be given hope by looking at you and seeing you smiling. We are the light of the world. The world is filled with darkness right now. The world is full of pain and hurting right now. They need a healer. They need a healer to come and tell them there is a healer. There is a bomb. The Bible says there is a bomb. Behold, there's a bomb of Gilead. And that bomb is Jesus Christ. And that bomb of Gilead, when you touch that bomb of Gilead, there is healing in the bomb of Gilead. You rub the presence of the bomb on your sores and you are healed. People are looking for a man or a woman to tell them there is hope. To tell them you will make it. Tell them we shall overcome. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, from verse 1 it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort them that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them the beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. Come on, thank you, Jesus, with me. To give them the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they may be that the Lord may be glorified. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The people around you are looking for somebody to come and tell them the spirit of the Lord is upon me. To come and tell them I've come with good news. I've come to tell you there is hope. I come tell you there is hope even beyond the calamity, beyond your joblessness, beyond, be, beyond what you're dealing with right now. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord. The reason why most of us cannot be able to bless anybody right now, cannot be able to light your light on anybody right now, because we have let the world, the oppression of the systems has come upon us. It has pushed us all the way down to where we are oppressed. We have no strength. We have no power. We have no anointing. So we have no strength to preach of the goodness. We have no strength to live the life of Christ. Letting your light shine so that when people see you, they don't see you different from anybody else. But the Bible says, I have come to tell you. I've come with the message of good tidings of the Lord. I've come to tell you that I'll bind the brokenhearted. There's people around you who need to be touched. People who are brokenhearted. They have been, during this time of Corona, so many people have lost relationships. So many people have been dumped and left. So many couples have cheated on each other and left. And there's so much heart and pain. So everybody around you is in pain. So we need to go to these people and, and touch them by the gospel of Christ. Touch them by the worship. Touch them by your radiance of the presence of God. Let them see that you're different. 
When you get a chance to speak to them, keep your distance, six feet distance. Tell them there is a bomb in Gilead. Tell them there's a God in heaven who loves you. Tell them I have come to you to tell you this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the year of Jubilee. In spite of all that has happened around us, we have wasted five months messing with this corona. But I know there is hope. I know beyond corona there is hope. I know there is Jesus Christ even in this boat. Even though there's storms everywhere. Even though there's so much chaos. Even though there's so much waves everywhere. I've come to tell you, to tell you there is liberty for the captives. To come and let you know that your prison door is opening right now in Jesus' name. The prison door might be, might be in their mind. They might be oppressed by the fear of tomorrow. They're afraid of dying. They're afraid of affliction. They're afraid of corona. They're afraid of losing their job. People are scared. People are afraid. We have to go to them and tell them, I have come to tell you there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in Jesus Christ. He is the healer. He is the God who restores. Hallelujah. My God is able to set you free. When we allow the Lord to lift us up, we as examples, we as the children of God, then God can take us and use us to touch the nations. I want to yield ourselves to Jesus and say, Lord, use me as you please. I have given myself and said, Lord, use me as you please. Lord, I surrender my life. Whatever you want me to do, oh Lord, in this place, in this small little home of mine, oh God, let me be a blessing to the nations, Lord. Let me be an influence to somebody. Let me change somebody who's giving up. Let me give somebody hope. Somebody who's thinking, oh my God, I'm not going to make it. Let me encourage you and tell you, God is able. My God is able. He will see you through. We have come with the ghost, Holy Ghost of Christ to do some few things around here. God wants you to be full of his presence. That way you can be able to, one, preach the good gospel of good tidings to everyone. Teach them. Tell them about Christ. Let them know there is a God in heaven. Let them know that even beyond this calamity, there is God. The second thing is you got to go and bind the brokenhearted. Go and encourage people. Give them a hug. Tell them, I give you a hug from a distance. I give you a hug in the Holy Ghost. Come on, get creative. And tell them, my God loves you. God shall see you through. Do not commit suicide. Do not grab that string around your neck. Keep the throat up. There's hope for you. Throw that away. Let me tell you my story. Tell them, seven, ten years ago, I was down and out. Tell them, five years ago, I was in prison. Tell them, I was bound and shackled in prison. And I cried and said, Jesus, come and rescue me. And the Lord Jesus, who is in heaven, who comes and dwells with us, he heard me. And after I prayed to God, he never came that night. I was alone in the cell and I prayed to God, God, rescue me. I said, God, if you rescue me, I will serve you all my life. Oh God, I pray, help me, keep me from this big, huge man. You've heard the stories about prison, how people get raped and everything. I was afraid of being touched by men. I was afraid of being hurt in the prison cell. So I cried, oh God, set me free from this place. You know I'm innocent, God, set me free. But after I prayed the next day, as if God was playing a joke on me. The next day, the tallest guy was brought into my cell. I was no longer alone. They brought this tall man. He was so tall. He was about 6'4". I'm only six foot tall. He was about half a foot taller than me. And I said, oh, and I said, are you in the right place? I thought people stay in their own cells. I didn't know that I'm supposed to be with somebody else. And I said, oh God, look at this man. And I cried to God. And I leant on that metal bed, that metal piece of metal that we lied on as a bed. And I cried and said, God, if you set me free from this hell, I will live for you the rest of my life. I said, God, if you set me free from this, this calamity, this has come to this man, Lord, I pray, keep this man from me. Keep this devil away from me. But oh God, if you save me from this hell, when I get out of his doors, oh God, as a free man, I will serve you the rest of my life, oh God. I will serve you all the days of my life. And I made God a promise and I said, God, I will never forsake you. I said, God, I'll never forget you if you set me free. You know, folks, when we are in trouble, when we are in going through hell, most of us don't need, we remember to call unto God. It's okay. God doesn't mind if you call upon him in time of trouble. He says, call upon me in the time of trouble. Call upon me in the days of trouble and I will hearken unto you and I will hear you. Our God does not stay deaf when you're in trouble. Our God sometimes may not come when you need him. He may not come when you call upon him because guess what? I call upon him and rather than setting me free, he brought more trouble. He brought this huge guy who I was afraid might do something to me. 
But I cried that night. I cried. I said, God, have mercy. God, have mercy. I repented of my sins, whatever I could think of. Anything I could imagine that I had done wrong. I even repented of the sins of the whoever person that got me put in there by lying against me. I repented on their behalf. And I said, God, for the sinner man, the sinner who brought me here, I pray you forgive them, oh God. And that night, the Lord had my cry. The next day, I got a call and I had a knock on my door. And they said, somebody has set you free. Some pastors had bailed me out. God spoke to some pastors in Dallas and I got my freedom. And when that big lock, that metal door opened, I as I stepped out, I said, God, if you let me out of this cage, six feet under, I couldn't even see the light of day. I said, God, I will live for thee. God, I will serve you all my life. So those of you that see me act like a crazy man, it's because of where I have been with God. It's because of how much trouble I've seen in my life. It's because of how much God has touched me. When I walked out of those doors, it looked like I was born again. When I saw the light, when I felt the smell of fresh trees, oh my God, I said, Lord, I thank you for freedom. And I said, oh God, at the time, like I said, God, you see those doors, those metal doors, Lord, I will never, I pray, oh God, help me to never ever step back in those doors. It's been seven years, guys. It's been seven years, and I have never looked back. I have never looked back. God came through for me. God set me free. God came through to the courthouse, and God stood with me. And I'm telling you, I'm a free man. All the lies were exposed, and I'm a free man today. It's been seven years. Seven is the number of God. Seven is the year of perfection, the number of completeness. God has completed that miracle of setting me free. So the Bible says, oh God, he says, I have come to proclaim acceptable year of the Lord, to set free them that are bound in prison. Oh yes, there was a man in the Bible like just like me. His name was Peter. He was in prison for the wrong reason. He was in prison because of preaching the gospel of Christ. And when the Lord set him free, he thought he was dreaming. He was like, oh my God, am I dreaming? When the angel said, rise up and follow me, Peter, get up, get up. He ro rose up and he thought he was dreaming. When that man told me, when that big jail, jail warden told me to get up, I thought, he, I thought I was dreaming. The place was cold, 40 degrees. My body was frozen. And I said, oh God, I cannot make it here for a week. I will be dead. I cannot make it for a week. And those two and a half days felt like two and a half years of my life wasted. And I said, God, I will serve you all the days of my life. That's why I go all over the place. I go to every continent that God gives me a chance. I've been to Europe. I've been to Asia. I've been to Africa. Now I'm in America. And I keep telling people, my God is good. I have come to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The day of the vengeance of our God. I've come to comfort them that mourn. To tell them, you have hope in Christ. I tell them, them that are mourning the death because I have mourned death. I have lost my mother. Oh my God, it was painful. Oh my God, 1995 was hard and I buried my mother as a young little boy. So when I see people that have lost their mom, they're crying, they're so crying, almost, almost committing suicide. I tell them, you shall make it. I tell them, oh my God, it's been 20 something years and my God has healed me. My God has restored me. In spite of losing my mother as a young boy, God has healed me. And just like that was not enough. 11 years ago, my father was walking up and down, a healthy man, a healthy 60 something year old man, just minding his own business. And just like the man in the Bible who was attacked by robbers who struck him down. My father was struck by robbers in the city of Nairobi in the backside of Kariobangi. Jesus. And they struck him down. They beat him up with sticks and clubs for nothing, for all the few shillings he had. The difference between my dad and the man in Jericho. The two difference between the two men, the man in Jericho and my dad. The man on his road to Jericho. The Bible says as he lay there bleeding on the road to Jericho. A man came by from Samaria. He was walking to, Je to, to, to Jericho from Samaria. He was a Samaritan. And back in the day, Samaritans had nothing to do with Jews. They, were, not, they had no relationship. They would stay away from them. But the Bible says that this man felt mercy on the guy who was bleeding and he came and received him. He came and, and bound him with his clothes, bind his wound. He tied up the wound that was bleeding. He was about to bleed unto death, but he tied him up and bound his wound. The Bible says he took him on his horse, on his donkey, and took him to an inn and told the innkeeper and paid and said, I'm going to pay you. Take care of this man until he heals and recovers. Take care of this man. 
bound his wounds, put a bandage on him, put the, the, the high stop and all the stuff they had back in the day. And the Bible says the man was taken care of, the man was healed, the man recovered. The difference between that man and my dad is that my dad was not in Jericho. And there was no man on the road to Jericho for my daddy. There was no man on the road to Jericho to come and touch my daddy, to come and heal him. So when I preach like a man who's about to go crazy, it's because I'm through pain. It's because I've seen and felt the pain of losing my dad and my mom. I've lost my little brother. So when I tell you that my God is able to heal, that I'm strong today because of Christ, I am strong today because of the Lord, that I have come to tell you, proclaim to you that this is the acceptable ear of the Lord. I've come to tell you that this is the day of the vengeance of the Lord. The Lord wants to come and revenge on your behalf. Those of you that have been hurt like me, that have been wounded like me, that have been afflicted like me, the Bible says it is the day of the vengeance of the Lord to come and fight on your behalf, to come and revenge for your, for your pain, to come and revenge for your, your affliction that you did not deserve. The Lord wants to come and heal you. He wants to come and be like the man of the road to Jericho. Those of you that are in pain right now because of relationships that are backfired. Those of you that are in pain because of losing income because of jobs. Those of you that are in pain because of Corona has hurt your family. I'm telling you, God wants to come and be a God of vengeance on your behalf. He wants to revenge the pain you've been through. He wants to come and recompense you. He wants to come and reward you and fill you with his presence because our God is a God of vengeance. He's a mighty warrior. Hallelujah. When my father passed away, I never thought I'd ever recover. My dad loved me so much. I loved him so much. We were buddies. We hang out a lot with my dad. Taught me so many things. My dad at the age of at the age of eight, he taught me business. Took me under his wings into his business and taught me how to do simple mathematics. He taught me, uh, my dad was the first accountant who taught me how to balance the balance the, the books. He taught me every evening, sit here and balance the left column is the in column. The, this is the out column on the right. Balance and make sure you have what came in the morning, what you began in the morning and what you have in the evening, how to balance your sales and your expenditure. He taught me all those things at the age of eight. And by the time I was 10 years old, I was a young businessman. And I thank God for that because now I am an entrepreneur in Texas. I'm a business owner by the grace of God because the things that my dad taught me, even though he's gone, those things were ingrained in my brain. And I thank God for the things I learned because now my life is never the same again. I'm no longer employed by anybody. I employ people because the Lord has been good to me. God wants to come and comfort them that mourn. If you've lost a child, if you've lost a parent, if you've lost a brother or a sister, I tell you right now, receive the peace of the Lord. Receive the grace of God. Receive the joy of the Lord. May the Lord's joy be your strength. May the Lord encourage you. May the Lord give you a heart to night. If you've lost a beloved one, if you lost a mom or a dad, this is not even in my message today. I'm not even planning to speak about this. But I feel that I need to encourage somebody tonight. Somebody who's in so much pain, because now I'm reminding you of your parents. I'm reminding you of your brother or sister. Receive the love of Christ tonight. Receive the hug from the Lord. Receive the comfort of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ, according to Isaiah 61, he came to give comfort to them that mourn. He came to give strength to them that mourn. Also, the Lord came to give you beautiful ashes. Those of you that are in ashes, you're in so much pain. You have been mourning and crying because of your losses, because of your predicament of what you've been through. You are sitting in a pile of ashes. God has come to get you, rise up from those ashes and wipe your ashes away and give you beauty. He has come to brighten your face and wipe your tears away. Clean you up and wipe you. And give you beautiful ashes. Those ladies watching it tonight, may God brighten your smile again. May God give you the sparkling bright smile again. May God give you the beauty that you've been you've been struggling to regain because of your pain, because of the affliction, because of the fear of the enemy, the fear of tomorrow. May you be strong in the Lord. May you be encouraged and know that the Lord our God is able to see you through. Know that a God who healed me, the Lord who saved Jesse, the Lord who restored me from all these painful losses, and now I can lift my hands and worship him. The same God lives in you. The same God is close to you. You can call upon his name, and he will set you free. Hallelujah. He also came to give you the oil of joy for mourning. For those who may be mourning the losses of the pain of what you're going through, he came to give you all the joy, to come and give you joy, close to you the brand new joy, brand new peace of God, the peace of God. Joy of the Lord comes to brighten you up. They can be happy again. You can be able to sing songs of praise, lift up his holy name, and say, great are you, God, I bless your name. I worship you for who you are, oh God. I thank you for your mighty God. If you know how to worship God, 
Worship brings the joy of the Lord. Worship replaces your presence, your witnesses with his presence. Worship, when you worship the Lord, you allow the Lord to come and dwell. You allow the Lord to come in and take, replace your fear, replace your in, inadequacies, replace your shortcomings with his presence. He replaces all that with his presence. You can be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. To trade, also the ninth thing I find is to trade the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Those who are heavy right now, you feel so oppressed by the enemy. You feel so scared of what to happen, what's to come. You're afraid of corona, afraid of losing your job. Or some of you don't even have a job. A lot of you have reached out to me and told me I don't have anything to pay my rent. Can you please help me? I want to tell you there is a helper. There is a brother who is closer, closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. If you trust Jesus, he will trade that garment of hopelessness and give you the garment of praise so you can praise his name. So you can lift up his name and say, God, you're so good. God, you're so faithful. I bless your holy name. I glorify your name for you are a good God. Hallelujah. When you worship the Lord, when you rise up from your weakness and be strong again, when you rise up and let the Lord give you strength, the Lord will give you the Holy Spirit to enable you to move on to the next. And let me read you a couple of things of what happens. Verse 4 says, in Exodus 61, verse 4, And they shall be, they shall build, they shall build the old waste. They shall rise from the former desolation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall build upon the old wastes. They shall rise up from former desolation. They shall, they shall repair from the waste cities. All those cities that have been destroyed by Corona, all those cities in Kenya, in uh, Tanzania, in Ethiopia, in London, in, in, in England, in, in Europe, in France, in, in Italy, in America, right here, in Mexico, in Argentina, in Brazil, in Russia, in, in India, in China. I pray that the Lord may give the, the servants of God the strength to build up these cities again. It is not the government that's going to do it. It is me and you by the praises of God. By calling upon the name of Jesus. I'm praying that Lord God may heal our cities again. Pray that God may rebuild those cities that are wasted right now. And verse 5 says, And the strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. I repeat, and the strangers shall come and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen for your, and your vine dressers. Oh, and verse 6 says, and you, you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. Hallelujah. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. You shall be refreshed in the name of Jesus. You shall eat the riches of of the Gentiles. When all this chaos is over, when all these calamities is over, let me tell you something right now. The Lord is saying to me to tell you, this has come to pass that he, that I, the Lord, may be glorified. The Lord wants when all the dust settles, when all the chaos settles and all the calamities settles, the Lord wants to bless you so much that he may be glorified. He wants you to be so blessed, so, so excited and so lifted into his presence that when people see you, they know you have a God. They know you are a living creature that has a God in you. Because let me tell you something. Verse 4 is talking about building, rebuilding the cities that have been destroyed. God will give us power to rebuild because he wants us to recover. He wants us to be strong again. He wants us to be prosperous, has to thrive again, thrive again, spread those wings again. Go see your friends and brothers. Go see your mom and dad. Go see them and have a hug. Have a normal life again. Have, a, have an open mind to just go and receive of the blessings of God. Second thing that God is going to do for us, he will restore us financially. Verse 5 says, and the stranger shall feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and the vine dressers. This is olden day stuff. What this means is that God will restore you financially. So if you own vines, God will bring strangers to dress your vines. If you own a farm, God will bring strangers, aliens from another country, people you don't even know, will come and minister unto you. Will come and hold your plow and be your plowman and plow your land. Why it plant the land? You can sow your seed into the ministry of the Lord and then the seed will grow up into a fruit and now you will be able to have sustenance for the future. He's bringing people into your life to help you sow the seed into the ministry of the Lord in your church, wherever you go. That way, after this corona is over, you shall have a fruit coming out of the ground. That fruit is prosperity. That fruit is your blessing. That fruit is you having more than enough to give to the kingdom of God. The third thing that will become, will become ministers and worshippers and priests of the Holy God. Verse 6 says, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. 
You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in the glory you shall boast of yourself, of, of, boast yourselves in the glory of God. Because when God lifts you up, when God anoints you, when God makes you a worshiper, when God makes you a priest of the whole highest God, He doesn't do that for you or you for you alone and your family. He does that to you that you can be a blessing to the nations, that your voice can touch and heal people like I'm doing right now. Your voice can encourage people and tell them, My God is able, and tell them God will restore you, God will heal you, God will bring back the day. Of joy, God will bring back happiness, God will bring back a song of joy. We shall lift up our hands again, we shall praise Him again, we shall exalt His name again, we shall be able to run again into the house of God. We shall be in the, uh, in the tabernacle of worship again. We shall go to the house of God and worship Him. We shall lift up our hands in the choirs, in the mass choirs. We shall lift up His name, we shall sing of His goodness, we shall sing of His power, we shall sing of His re revival that's coming after Corona in the name of Jesus. We shall sing of his goodness in the midst of all the destruction. When God begins to rebuild our cities, when God begins to rebuild your home, when God begins to rebuild your finances, when God begins to rebuild your bank account that's right now depleted by the enemy because of corona, because of joblessness, I pray that the Lord shall do it so good that you will be calling and say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done because the Lord is good. Oh my God is good. Yes, because God has a good plan for you. Hallelujah. And verse 7 says, you shall have double for your trouble. That's the fourth thing. When we rise up in the Holy Ghost, when you rise up in the presence of God, when you rise up as sons of God, the fourth thing that's going to happen is God will give you double for your trouble. Hear this in verse 7 of Isaiah 61. For your shame, you shall have double. Hallelujah. The reason why I'm so blessed is because I've been through so much shame. I've been through so much pain. I've been through so much, so much... Um, Dis disappointments. I've been so broken hearted by so many. I've been hurt by many. I have been through so much pain many times. I have buried my so many members of my family. Reason why God has blessed me. He is blessed me with double for my trouble. He's given me more than enough because he wants me to have more than enough to bless you. More than enough to give and bless you. To give and touch you. Listen. Verse 7 says, for your shame you shall have double. And for confusion, you shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Ooh, double twice. Double for your tr trouble. Double for all you've been through. Double for all your shame. Double for all the confusion. Hallelujah. Double portion for you. I speak double portion to you in Jesus' name. I speak double portion in Jesus' name. Write that down in the comments. Double portion in Jesus' name. May you be also blessed that you can have more than enough to bless those around you. May people be calling you and say, oh, please, please bless me. Please help me. May people come to you and say, oh, I need a prayer. Oh, I need a prayer. Pray for me. May people be coming to you and say, oh, Oh, sing for me. I'm so heartbroken. Encourage me. Say something. Speak a word. May God give you more than enough to bless others. When God gives you more than enough, it's because he has found you to be faithful. God is not going to give a child a knife because the child will cut herself. God will not give a child poison because the child will drink the poison and die. God puts these things these things I'm talking about in an adult, grown people, people who are mature, people who know the Lord, people who know themselves, because he knows you've been tested, because he knows you've been through trouble, because he knows you've been through hell on earth. So he knows you are true and tried, tried and true. And so God will give you double for your trouble. He'll give you so much more than enough that you can be able to go and share the joy, share the love, share the peace. Go and speak peace, breathe the peace of God unto the people around you. Let those around you call you blessed. The scripture that says that your children shall rise up and call you blessed. All those parents watching me tonight, may your children rise up and call, oh, mama blessed. May they rather say, my father is a blessed man. My mother is a blessed woman because she loves God. Because he loves God. May they see the blessings of the Lord upon you. May your five-year-old see you different. May they know you are a child of God. Hallelujah. May they say, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah.
like young cows At the sound of the voice of the God that we serve Our help in ages past Our hope for years to come Besides the O Lord tonight, this evening, by this message, by this worship. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord smile upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Those of you that are reminded of somebody you've lost, those of you that are reminded of your place where you've been, you've been low, lying low, just so discouraged by everything. Tonight's message was arise and shine for the light has come. May the Lord lift you up tonight. And those in Africa and Europe this morning, may the Lord lift you up and give you strength to rise up and carry on. May the Lord give you the power to become the light in the city, <clears throat> the light in the village. May God give you the anointing and the word and the message and the strength to give other people strength, to encourage others who are in pain, to encourage others who are hurting. May God give you the utterance of the word. May God give you the flow of the Holy Ghost that you can help people, you can strengthen people, you can encourage people, that I'm encouraging you to encourage somebody else. May the Lord remember you tonight. May the Lord be good and kind to you that you can be able to be a blessing to those around you. Because God is good. I can do this all night. Oh, I love to worship. Oh, Jesus. Heal them from depression. Those who have anxiety, heal them in 
the name of Jesus. Those that are discouraged for losing your loved one, give them, hug them, encourage them, give them the strength and comfort them. Let them know that it is well. It is well in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. We have to close. I'm 10 minutes over. I love you all. See you next week. Rise and shine. Shine for Jesus. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. May he shine on you. May he smile on you tonight. May Jesus give you a hug and comfort you like he has comforted me the last seven years. I'm strong today because of what God has done for me. So may he remember you. May he touch you. May he strengthen you. May he cover you from Corona. May he shield you. May Corona not even come anywhere near your dwelling. Not near your family, your friends. May it not be known near your co-workers. May your co-workers be blessed. May your workplace be covered. Those nurses watching me, those doctors watching me, all those frontline delivery people, all those who clean those dirty wash hospital rooms, I pray that the Lord will protect you in those hospitals. As you save those lives, as you heal those sick poor people, may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord cover you with a, cover you with a web of protection. That way COVID will not catch you. Dr. Bindi, I know you're watching me in Kenya. May God bless you and touch you as you heal people. Miss Jessica in Dallas, as you heal people, as you touch them. May God bless you. Miss Nemo in Dallas, as you touch people. All you nurses that are out there in the front line, risking your lives for others, may God protect you. May God love you. May God hug you tonight. I love you all, and I wish you a beautiful night. Bless you. See you soon. Mwah.